So in this last unit of this chapter here, we are going to deal with outliers. And yeah, we've done the linear regression t-test a bunch of times, but we've never really talked about that s value that was inside of that uh, list of table values. Well, I think I've mentioned it a few times, though I didn't expect anybody to write it down, nor did I expect anybody to remember it. But the s value has a name. The S is the standard error of the estimate. And this is going to go by two different names. One abbreviated name is the um, S est, the standard error of the estimate. So sometimes I see books with a big capital letter S and then the little subscript EST for the standard error of the estimate. Or you can think of this, this is probably where you're going to land on understanding what this S represents on the calculator. It is the standard deviation above and below the Y hat or the line of best fit. Remember how through this whole unit and through the whole course, the standard deviation has always been this, you know, give or take. You know, the give is always associated with adding and the taking is always associated with the subtracting. Well, this is going to be actually a vertical addition or a subtraction off the line because what we have is this very useful thing because we can not only predict the line of best fit, but we can also show you that more than likely, this is where the normal values will occur. So we first of all have to remind ourselves, okay, after we type in this data, we have to get the line of best fit and the S. So we're gonna look at that on the calculator. Now I've already spent my time typing this in into list one and list two. And if you've made it this far, you know how to get the data in there. Now we're gonna click on the stat, then we're gonna go to the tests, and then we're gonna go to the linear regression t-test. And again, if you've made it this far and watched my previous videos, you know how to do all this. Now click on enter, all the defaults are fine. Click enter again. And now we need the A and the B. And in this case, we're not going to ignore the S value here, which is 0.45. We're going to round it to decimal places. So we're going to get our A value, which is 0.39, which is going to round to 0.4, and our B I'm going to round to 0.11. So the line of best fit is going to be 0.4, that's our y-intercept, plus 0.11x, and our S in this case is 0.45. Now, let's kind of dive deep into plotting the points. So we can just go from 0 to 70 by 10s. So here's 20, here's 40, here's 60. And we're going to go on my y-axis. Since we've done this so many times, I'm going to go up to 7. So 63 was here at 7. 29, which is a little bit before 30, was at 3.9, which is a little bit before 4. Okay, and 2 point, sorry, 20.8, which is a little bit after 20, is a little bit above 2. And 19.1, which is a little bit before 20, was a little bit below 3 at 2.8. 13.4, which is, you know, not quite, ha I mean, not quite halfway. 1.4 is not quite halfway up as well between that uh, 1 and 2. But 8.5, which is before the 10, is exactly 1.5. So we're going to try to be exact there. So we can now look at this on our calculator. We can now click the Y equals, turn our plot 1 on. Black is good there. And then we're going to type in our 0.4 plus 0.11x. And then hit graph. Wait, after we change our window, our window goes from 0 to 70. Wait, 70, not 7. 70 by 10s. And our y minimum goes 0 to 7 by 1s. Again, hit graph. 
Now it looks great. So there's our line of best fit. And I'm going to draw my line of best fit from that as best as I can do it. Looks like it threads the needle between those two lines pretty nicely. Uh, this is where I wish I had a ruler, but you guys can use rulers, so please use your rulers as this is my Y hat. That's our line of best fit line. Okay, now we've done that. We've got our 0.4 plus 0.11x. This is our y1 in our equation. We got that on our calculator. We can click the calculator and you can see this is what we have in y1. Now what do we do with the standard error of the estimate? Well what we're going to do is we're going to apply 1s above and below the line. So now I really have to try to explain what does the s standard stand for? It's one standard deviation away vertically off of the line. So to show you this, I'm going to move to list two and I'm going to type in 0.4 plus 0.11x plus the 0.45 billion dollars. That way you can see that I'm going to have a line that's actually a half billion parallel to it above it. And we're going to do the same thing in Y3, but instead of an addition sign, I'm going to have a subtraction sign in front of my standard deviation, minus 0.45. Okay, so what this is going to give me, it's going to give me two more lines that are parallel to the line that we had call our line of best fit. And I'm going to use a different color for this. So this is going to be 0.4 plus 0.11x plus 0.45 and 0.4 plus 0.11x minus 0.45. Now, those of you who got a lot of algebra, you might notice that we could have combined the y-intercept with the standard error of the estimate, but I think having it separate shows that this, all it did was kind of elevate this line of best fit up a half step and down a half step and what this is saying is that since we know that a normal curve between zero and one standard deviation is considered normal 60 um 60 uh like we used to say it was 66 percent but really it's 68 percent it's the this is the empirical rule hey remember the empirical rule final exams coming up so 68% of the population is within one standard deviation um, above and below that, um, that, uh, that zero. So what we're saying is this green zone, 68% of the data is inside that green zone. So you are probably not going to land exactly on the line of best fit, but... The give or take, which is 0.45, is going to be like, wow, check it out. We're probably, likely, normally going to be off this line, and that is pretty great. So it shows us the give or take off of this line that's going to happen 68% of the time. Now, what we're about to do is we're about to go a little crazy here. We're about to go two standard deviations above and below the line. And what this is going to set up, it's going to set up what 95% of the time we're going to see approximately, but it's also going to set up our outlier zone. Okay, so here's what we're going to have. In Y4, we're going to type in 0.4 plus 0.11x plus 0.45 times 2 and 0.4 plus 0.11x minus 0.45 times 2. All right, let me show you what's going to happen. If we go to our calculator and we go to our y equals, and then in list four, we're going to type in 0.4 plus 0.11x plus 0.45 times 2. You can use parentheses or the multiply key. And then 0.4 plus 0.11x minus 0.45 times two. All right, there we go. And now we hit graph, and now you see another line above it and another line below it. Let's go and graph it on our piece of paper. 
to show what this multi-lane highway looks like. So essentially this is adding another um, line about a half step higher on my y-axis and it's going to run parallel to all the lines below it because the slope hasn't changed. Remember that from college algebra? Yeah, you know, you're, you're uh, by changing the y-intercept you create a parallel line because you're not changing the slope. So parallel lines have different slopes. I'm sorry, same slopes and different y-intercepts. Okay, so what we have now is we have this 95% zone. So 95% of the data is going to be in this green and yellow section, which means that any data point that occurs outside of this zone, this multicolored zone, anything outside had less than a 90, had a, had a wow, the, it had a less than a 5% chance of happening. So any point value above or below the second set of lines, Y495, is an, wait for it, outlier. That's right. We can determine outliers because they will exist two standard deviations away from that line of best fit. So here's a negative two, here's a two. So anything inside of this green and yellow zone is 95% of the data thanks to the empirical rule. So anything outside of those lines uh, would be an outlier. Okay, and so in the next and last video, we are going to talk about um, outliers and are, you know, like, gosh, are outliers influential or not? Thank you for watching.